shocked that like so- there were no waterbenders that got born. I know, I he was like, like, you need to rescan this. I was, like, I was like, we aren't stealing! And I'm not here thirsting over Jimmy Neutron. Amanda <laughs> said, I must tear bend. Avatar Sanga. The Avatar Sanga. Avatar Sanga. Who are you, the Avatar's fangirls? Hey, 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 hey. Okay, so everyone, if you notice anything different by the looks of things, I am standing. I Amber am standing. standing. I'm sure most of you are listening because this is a podcast, but yes. if you're YouTube people and you like visuals, um, Amber's standing up. I'm standing because I cannot sit right now. And why is that? Well, something is off in my hips. And they said don't sit down. And so I won't because it's pinching. And also, yeah, I just need to just, I can't sit. Okay. I just need to let the chi flow through my body. And that is what I learned from my acupuncturist. And that reminds me of Avatar The Last Airbender. Mm -hmm. We need to go to Pilates. And I have been looking for a place to do that. There's a place close to us. Oh, my God. That I said this the other day, and you had no expression on your face. I was like, we really do need to go to that Pilates place. And you looked at me like this. I wasn't listening to you. And I was like, <laughs> okay. I can not hear you that. I was not listening it's to you It's the at one all. right next to <laughs> that we saw at the same time. So that's why I was like, why is she looking at me with no recognition in her face? Looked I wasn't at the place. I simply wasn't listening. We walked in together. Um, anyway, it is correct. The chi is flowing. And is I need flowing. to stop. You need to get the, the energy <sighs> in your body. <laughs> you need to like energy bend. It is a Saturday morning, everyone. And so that is why, like, you know, I haven't really moved around. Like, I need to go walking somewhere. <laughs> we we just came straight here, y'all. Um, okay. Yeah, I should probably like go exercise or something after this. Yeah, no, um, for sure. This is a fandom podcast, and we do get get, get deep on this podcast. So I will I'm not gonna get into anything, but I am going to be cryptic and say I'm going through some personal things and um, when Amber picked me up this morning I started sobbing so we're in that headspace but I'm going to lock it in for this episode Amanda said I must tear bend <laughs> and that is okay I said don't You're even stop crying me tear bend. I said don't even stop crying I said you keep crying I will drive <laughs> So that's the headspace that we're coming at you with this. But I am at the same time excited to get this going because if you have listened to our recent episodes since the Avatar episode, we have not been able to stop talking about Avatar with any guests, even if they have not seen it. It's like pretty true. this whole year. And I said to Amber, Amber, you know, we binged Avatar twice, twice this year, the original and the live action in the same month, like one week, up, two weeks apart from each other. Like in the same month didn't move for eight hours like that's both of them took the same amount of time yeah that's both eight hours like and and we didn't do the whole we didn't do well no it would one season one season the first season of avatar took eight eight hours oh i was like right i was like it's not eight hours i was like i feel like we were there for days yeah we were there (laughs) for two and a half days we were uh lying i was lying on the floor and amanda was on the couch for like two and a half days just watching Avatar The Last Airbender. Because we were like, we need to watch this in the only free 72 hours that we have. And when it came out, I was like, w- w- with the whole Netflix drop of it all, like, I can't have spoilers. Like, yeah, I no. don't, I consider other people's opinions of something spoilers. Yeah, I'm like, I don't want to hear anything. I don't anything. know the plot. I, exactly. Like, I don't want to know your opinion. Like, don't like, tell actually, me anything. Actually, don't tell me what you, even, let me get even, something even from it myself. if you liked it, don't tell, me, don't tell it yes. to me. That's yes. the type of fan I am. Yes. And that's a struggle Until for you me. see it, though. Until I see it. Because it's like, wait. 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 <laughs> um, the, yesterday, Amber was like, don't you kind of think we're in a Muppet movie and like no one else knows? Like, sometimes I feel like you and me are in a Muppet movie. And we just, like, were <gasps> so high <gasps> cackling through the streets of L.A. Yesterday. yesterday was the long, like, the first time I've been that high in a grocery store <laughs> in a long time. Like, I felt like I was in college when we would, like, get stuck in Rite Aid. Like, I was like, you know what? This is insane. But that's why I didn't want to go to the self checkout because I was like, I think I'm too high to do that. And then you're like, it's going to take faster. And then it literally <laughs> didn't take faster. I was standing there for minutes staring frozen at the screen trying to figure out how to pay. I I was just and then bagging the man the came stuff. up to us twice. I know. I he was like, like, you need to rescan this. I was, like, I was like, we aren't what? stealing. I said, which one? 
I was like, which one? Because I was moving so fast. I was like, he's going to think that we're stealing. Oh, my God. And then I, it, was, it, it, it occurred to me that, like, oh, he can see that, like, we have two bags because of the weight that we didn't scan. I was like, oh, he wasn't Wait. watching us. Yeah. He just didn't see it on his little machine because he came out of nowhere. I was like, where did you come from? Yeah, he did come out of nowhere. He was like, how many bags do you need? I was like, I need to take my time. I, need, I was yeah, like, seven. Get out of here. And I was like, seven? I only need two. <laughs> I only needed two. No spoilers for me. Nine. You know who's terrible with spoilers? The Doctor Who fandom mm. and Britain as a whole. I'm sorry, I'm going to go there. I thought you were going to say a personal person because I was thinking of someone. What is up Okay, you don't have an experience this, but you have because at the ne the next time ons at the end of every episode give you like basically the entire plot. Like if you were like to be writing <gasps> oh report Sorry, on that an was episode, so yes, they give you plot by plot what's gonna happen. The coolest part, yes, I'm like and the coolest reveals of the next episode. There have been time, yeah, no, it's you're like, right. What are you talking? Okay, right. I didn't need to know that Daleks were the the enemy in this if the if the title doesn't include Daleks. And now with all the new. It's not coming out it's until May, better. and we have we have a full trailers and full like episode titles and full plot points mm -hmm. of every single one of the eight of eight. There's only eight episodes. We have all of them, and I'm like, I don't need to know any of this. Why are y'all discussing this right now? Mm -hmm. uh, 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 that's a tangent. No, no, but you're right because there have been times that I would I have dozed off. Like sometimes I doze off while watching Doctor Who because I'm watching it late at night and I have to like, go back and like restart it. But the times that I have dozed off. I wake up to the next time on and I'm like, what happened <laughs> currently? I was like, where did the storyline go? And I, it's so confusing. And it's also so exposing. It's so, like, I, I'm like, that I don't need to spoiler. see it. That's a spoiler. Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. I like we only need previously ons. We do not need next time we ons. Do not, do not tell me what's happening next time. They don't I am believe, processing what happened this time. They don't believe that the audience will tune in unless they know that something really cool is happening next time. You have to have and faith like, in you, your process. You your, have your, to tease us. You have to have faith in the, in, the, in the journey of it. You have to tease us you have to tease us with just enough to make us go like want to see it you can't give us the entire plot and be like this is what's happening you bet i bet you want to see it as mary kate and ashley say half the fun is getting there <laughs> i really want to watch that movie I it's think nowhere we should probably do it it's mary kate and eighty ashley. dollars on ebay and i almost got it and i was like don't they have Spend you should get you should get the you should get them the at VHS tape. um whammy the right, Whammy! Right? Whammy Analog yeah. Media, shout yeah. out in Silver Lake. Yeah. Um, they are a VHS store, but they're yeah. also an event venue. And I need to get a VHS. We had our podcast release player party there. They have getting there on VHS. Do you think our old VHS player still works? It's in the garage. No. I don't I also don't Why have any do faith. We have I don't have any faith that the Wii works, but I took it from our mother's house and I, I was I, and I think we should plug it in and just see if it I works. wanna play the Wii and I wanna I saw Just Dance too somewhere and I was like we need it. You know, we could just put Just Dance Two on the on YouTube and do it. Like yeah, it won't I, be the I, game, I, I but used like to do that. maybe I should do that at my birthday party. Do you think I, I should? Yeah, do that? that's a good idea because I used to do that. I'm really heavily thinking about college right now for some reason. So am I. Like freshman year specifically, and it's like I I feel like this. What time is it? It's April. I feel like this time <sighs> of year I always think about school for some reason, and I think it's because as an adult, summer break is just work. Yeah, I, I have always loved April because my birthday is there, but it's the, also the end of the school year, so you're kind of, like, not as stressed as you were in the fall semester. Because yeah. in the fall semester, you're like, okay, this semester's over, but we have a whole other one. Yeah. But then when it's, like, this semester's over, and then we get summer break. Yeah. Like, I do feel, because yeah. I feel depressed in August usually yeah. because Me too. even though I'm, I'm like, not starting school but yeah, I it's like do. what's going yeah it's like kind of like the body is like, like jitters Ooh, like uh -oh. something's about to happen something's happening and I'm strong uh oh and it's also like it is lighter in the summertime you're just mm, you're just running and, and I, you're frolicking and you're running I also think because I am a fire sign I think I'm gonna stand up for every single episode forever well that's fine you know um, we can do whatever we want um, it's think, fucking right do you think we should talk about like just a little bit about the live action like I don't really want to get into like all of it I'm gonna say what I like about the live action and what I like number one Dallas Lou as Zuko okay I think that he captures he seems what he seems like to me is he seems like someone who like really likes the show and maybe Zuko might have I don't know I don't know anything because I haven't been watching full interviews but I'm like it seems like he really liked the show maybe Zuko was his favorite and he knows what he knows Zuko the, t the, the key to portraying a character is knowing them yourself. And I think that he was like, Zuko is a whiny boy. Zuko is a whiny teenager. 
and that's how he did it. And he really captured it. And a lot of people were like, well, not a lot of people, but people had some notes. And I was like, have you seen the original? Like, Zuko is whining a I, lot in okay. season one. I think this is an opportunity to say two things. One, Amber was like, I don't know about Dallas. Last time we talked about this on our Avatar episode. Because I would, I was a familiar with his work, and she was not familiar with his work. And I was like, I think he's hot. You didn't even say yeah, that he was no, hot. Yeah, no, I, I was just like, okay. But I was like, I'm excited. I think he's a good casting for Zuko, honestly. I, I didn't wait. have a single opinion. Like, I didn't know a thing about him. And number two, now, we posted a TikTok saying that Zuko is the hottest animated character of yeah. all time. Yeah, And... A lot of people were like, yes, 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 yes. And then a lot of people were like, no, have you not seen this, this, this anime? And I was like, no, no I haven't, we girl. Haven't. So we're talking about Avatar Life. I was, and they would be like, what about this character? And I'm like, drop the anime. Yeah, well, yeah, tell drop us. Drop it, tell us what it is so tell I can us. watch it. And two, a bunch of people were like, honey, he's 16. Now, I'm going to address this here Please and do, now. Please do, because and it's never very again. offensive to me. Because why don't you think about your teenage crushes? who were played by adults. Yeah. How about everybody thirsting over the Euphoria cast? All played by adults, but they are playing teenagers. Mm -hmm. What about the Glee cast? What about Zac Efron? Mm -hmm. Like, all these people are adults playing teenagers. Mm -hmm. Dante Bosco was a full-grown adult. He was in his 30s, yeah. I believe, yeah. playing Zuko. Yeah. And yes, he is 16, but one, he is animated. Yeah. Two, he's animated in a hot way. <laughs> <laughs> and three, I don't fully believe that he's a teenager in the original. Like, he's not really playing. I don't, I don't care. He's more playing it like as a person, a, like college age, just like yeah. an immature young person. Yeah, like, I would agree. Like because, a 20 year old something. Because he's playing, he's played by an adult. Like, I don't get the full teenagehood thing. Yeah. Now, Dallas is also an adult. But he but pulls. He, he is like. He actually whines like a teenager. He's actually whining like a teenager. And for the first time ever, I saw Zuko as like a whiny brat teenager. Yes. Okay. You know? And that's a good point because, I yes, I get that because people were like, why is he playing it so whiny? And it, it, it. It did take him doing that for me to, for it to pull it out even more in the in the original show. But like I will say, I after seeing it a, a certain amount of times, like going back and rewatching it even this time before we saw the live action, I was like, Zuko is whiny. He is whiny, and that's just me looking way. at it as an adult. And then two to to piggyback off of the the p comments about he's sixteen. Why are you thirsting over a sixteen year old? We are not. I was 12 when he came out, when it, when it came out, or when I was watching it for real. Like, yeah, honestly, when it came out, I was nine. When it, yeah, when I came out, seven. Didn't, I, I didn't have a crush on him when I was seven. And I'm, no, I'm because that ponytail really disturbed me. I was confused me. and the dynamics of the show in, in its entirety. I'll be honest. <laughs> they only play those first two episodes, like, Back to back all the time on Nickelodeon. I was like, I am so confused. Where are they going? I'm too. I was too young. Like even yeah. when we were rewatching, because this episode is the first two episodes. When we were rewatching it this time, I was like, there's so much of this that went over my head. Yeah. And like I Same. know that it went over my head. Same. But like, you're not. You're telling me that you don't have a crush on Danny Phantom. You're telling you're, me you don't exactly, have a crush on Kim that boy's Possible. That fourteen. On Shigo, like you. These are me, just childhood crushes. The thing I feel like, it's and they're all played by adults. I have to keep saying that all of these a they're animated yes, characters. Yes, but I want, but I really do want to emphasize that talking about a childhood crush online is not something that is creepy. Everyone does it, and it was rubbing me the wrong way because I was like, "What are these TikTok commenters?" thinking I like think what's going on with the world like they just it's just so people just take things out of context and i know we already talked about this on uh, a, like a couple episodes in the I, past, but it's just annoying i also think i said this to a friend and they were like you have to remember that everyone on tiktok when they like people most people talking on tiktok are teenagers and literal children and there's Don't this like return to purity culture that's been happening online like mm -hmm. with the teens that that's like against anything sexual and then like that has led into like super hyper focus on age gaps and stuff we can talk about age gaps and pedophilia like those are those are problematic things it, and, and and certain age gaps are awful but don't tell me about my childhood crush yes. acting like this is a this is a show that came out in 2024 and I'm an adult thirsting over a 16 year old animated character right this show came out 20 years ago but do you know what I mean it's yeah. like like my first crush if we're gonna go there my, my first animated crush was Jimmy Neutron I can't believe it and it's not like I'm and I'm and and Jimmy Neutron is completely different than Zuko because he is literally a child like yeah. he is a child and I'm not here thirsting over Jimmy Neutron I had a crush on Sully I, the monster I and I had a crush on Mike 
So what? The monster. What do you want to say about that? A grown man, um, <laughs> ma- played by Billy Crystal, and that man <laughs> also plays Calcifer in House Moving Castle. And I had a weird crush on Calcifer as well because of the Mike thing. James P. Sullivan. And then I saw When Harry Met Sally, and I was a little bit overwhelmed. The dad and righteous gemstones. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, the grandpa. What is his name? I forgot. It doesn't matter. John. John. Something. John. Something. Man. Some John Goodman. John Goodman. I almost said John Barrowman. Do you remember when my phone, when Siri said, calling John this morning? Yeah, who the fuck is I John? I have no idea who John is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, no idea. I also want to give flowers to the man that played Sokka. Oh, yeah. In the live action, Sokka and Zuko are my favorite characters, and I think that they were my favorite actors of the portrayers. And yeah, I think I, they portrayed them in an in a accurate way. I will always love the animation. One of our last guests, Zay Dante, said that certain things, there you will never get better than the original medium. Like, I don't think, Ava- like he said, I don't think Avatar yeah. gets better than as an animation, and I completely agree. I agree. Um, there, I, en- I enjoyed the live action. I thought it was entertaining, but I also thought that they kind of misunderstood tenets that made the original show work. You yes, know? I um, agree. But I don't want to, like, harp. Like, I'm not, I, we, we don't do reviews, you know? No. Like, we're not a reviewing podcast. We just be talking. We are talking about how it affects us and, like, the show and the universe and anything Avatar has a f- fully affected me. Very much. Fully, a fully affected Very me. much so. so. I'm glad it's getting a second and third season. I honestly do want to see, like, a lot of elements. I am I want to see all of it. I do, like, I don't, the thing is, with, with live action things, after growing up with so many, like, books or whatever turn to turn to a movie or turn to live action or something adaptations adaptations i could not think of that word but yeah what with, with so many like adaptations of different originals i'm just kind of like i know what i'm going into like yeah. i love to see an adaptation of something no matter what just because i i it's like what are they going to do with it? It, it, it like it's great if it's amazing and very accurate it's like wow but Either way, I'm just like, yeah, I'm going to see it. I want to see what they're going to do with it. Like, I like to see it. There's certain ones that uh, that do offend me, and I'm like, I wish this didn't exist. But then like I the get... the first Last Airbender. Mm, we don't talk about it. Mm-hmm. And, I, and, and that's how I act. Like, yeah. I'm like, and, and I don't... I act like it doesn't exist. Yes. Um, yes. Like, I, with, I, like, with Bratz, I don't... I, I don't act like that doesn't exist, but I for sure act like that's a completely different thing it's than... It's a completely new what, project. Like, the Bratz, the dolls. It's a completely new project. Yeah, that's not what we're... That's not... Those are not my girls. Those are not my girls. <laughs> those are uh, not my girls. <laughs> those are not my girls. Uh, who are these girls? <laughs> these are, this is a completely different plot line. Completely. This is not right. Completely. And I do think that there's something to be said about a cast spending more time with each other and, like, having yeah. more chemistry like I think like I like them in interviews and I think that the longer that they work together the stronger they will become yeah me too as a an on- ensemble yes I think that each care I each each cast member has the essence of the character it's just about pulling it out on the my biggest somehow. note about the series was that like it was way too plot heavy and they ripped apart the ensemble way they too did. fast they did they I was were, like where's the gang together they were not together a why lot is the, of the gang time. not together there was just yeah there was a lot of stuff and i just like i really i know we're not, i don't want to harp on it but i just really don't like how they didn't they did i, I just don't like the things that they decided to pull from the later season me and put neither into this one because i kind of like i'm like in your heart of hearts you knew you were going to get the other th- two seasons right why did you do this and i'm just like t- t- show me what you're gonna do next because what's, what's gonna... i thought the first How two episodes develop? were the best and i don't think that they should have pulled in any elements from the f- future seasons because it's about children growing up it's about it's a coming of age story for all these characters yeah and pulling in certain things from season two is like they're they're not mature enough to deal with that stuff. Yeah. You know, they 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 get to Cave of Two Lovers because they're at that point yeah, they in were, their relationship with each other. Yeah, that they had been gone from home that long. They that knew much each longer. other that well. They, and I just really I, I was gonna I, say I was laughing the whole time. Oh, when we when we sat down to watch it, literally we were watching the first episode and I had a oh my cup God. of apple juice. <laughs> and Amber was sitting on the floor in front of me and she like whacked her elbow because she was like doing no, her little exercise. I know. I think no, no, no. I think I, I think I was, mo- I was moving a pillow. Oh. 
<laughs> I thought you were whacking your elbow. Are you sure you weren't whacking your elbow? Yeah, no, I think I was moving a pillow. Because I was trying, yeah, I was trying to move the pillow for out from under. And it all to put went it. flying. The whole, it all the apple juice went flying. It so much apple all. juice. I got wet too, like on the, just on the side of me. And the whole desk, and the whole desk, it was on and then flooded on Amanda. So like flooded. that was a lot of apple juice. And it was the same point in the story in the original when Katara drenches Sokka like, in the on, canoe. In acci- on, accident, on accident, by water bending, And literally, it was about to happen, but it didn't happen in the live action. Yeah. But it was at the same point, it's like, we did it instead. Yes, I it was, was literally it was so funny. covered. And Amber was like... I was just like, why did you have that much why? apple juice? <laughs> <laughs> like it was one of those tall cups you can get from Target, and like you know, a lot of people don't really fill those to the brim, and it was filled to the brim. <laughs> I was like, "Why did you put so much apple juice in this?" <laughs> because it was gonna last me all night. I was gonna drink it for the eight hour marathon. Eight hour marathon. <laughs> <sighs> okay, but I was gonna say. I remember what I was gonna say, and this is my last thing, my last negative thing about the, the live action. I just really. There was no reason for us to see Ozai or Azula, and that's no. my opinion. Or or May or Ty Lee, yes. for that matter. May and Ty Lee didn't do anything. Like wait, like they literally didn't do a thing except for say something on the sidelines. And I just don't like how weak they made Azula look. And you're supposed to be scared of her, and then watch her unravel. Like yeah. her unraveling is yeah. not going to be yeah. as big of a thing because yes. you're supposed to think that she's unstoppable. You're supposed to see it from Zuko's point of view. Yeah, we are in Sokka, Katara, and Aang's point of view and Zuko's point of view the whole time we never leave that yeah like we every even know even, even if we're not with either of them we are seeing it as they would see it like whenever we're seeing Azula on her own we're scared of her because Zuko's terrified of yes her. like whenever yes. we see Zuko on his own we empathize with him because we're in his perspective yes yes I can't get it no we, oh my god that's so good though too <laughs> it's so good how they do that though. Uh, it's so good. When you said we're, ter- uh, we're when you were saying we're scared of her because they're scared of her, I was thinking of the uh, the, the the girls coming on those lizards. Oh my god. <laughs> I was like, across. Oh, yeah, we're terrified oh, of her. Oh, yeah, for sure. we're scared of them. Okay, we made it across the stream. That should hold them. <laughs> like, no. Terrifying, like no other. Keep lying. Um, and then we are never scared of Uncle. Uncle's badass. Uncle is really good at fighting. We're never scared of him. Do you know what I just thought of? The Fire Nation is very infuriating because they have no means of flying until that guy makes them their warships. And they would have if they weren't slaying dragons. (laughs) They could have had some friends if they weren't slaying them all. Yeah, they could have had air power, like legitimately. They were like, oh, fucking idiots. We can't get to the air no ass because we don't know how to fly. You killed all of your goddamn dragons. I can't believe you. They So they taught you how to firebend and then you killed them. That's insane. Should we get into this rewatch? Weak ass bitch, Sozin. Weak ass, weak. Like, yeah. Honestly, why did he do that? Because it was not to everything he did was to his detriment. But I mean, that's what imperialism stupid. is. Is like you think you have to control everything, and so you don't understand what would happen if you just let go. Like things would just work themselves out if you just let go and let God. And by God, I mean the universe and like harmony. You know, the like world. just let everything be in balance. And I can't believe the Avatar was gone for a hundred years. No wonder the fucking world went out. No wonder the world was like all out of whack, like all out of balance. The Avatar was gone for a century. This oh rewatch, when we were watching this, like I w- my eyes were glued to the screen in a way that I was just like, this is really, really good storytelling. Even if it's a little bit dull for a child, yeah. like, cause it's a lot of information that they're throwing at you, but in really quick ways, funny ways, Sokka's like quick, Sokka's, Sokka's, Every single one of the characters has such a clear perspective. Yeah. Like, you understand Katara isn't a waterbender, but she has no one to teach her, and Sokka thinks it's stupid. Sokka is the last boy in his tribe. His father left, his mother died, and he has to protect everyone, and he's insecure because he's never actually been in war. Yeah. And so he's so super defensive all he's the time. So hyper masculine. And use, uses humor to mask that. Yeah. And then Aang, he's just here to hang out. He doesn't know what the fuck's going he's on. He's like, I just got here. He he literally left. He literally is avoiding all his problems and is trying to have as much fun as possible. What's really insane is he, it's so crazy that he doesn't know what's up when he comes out of that iceberg. He literally not, has not, not a one. clue. He probably, is he like, yeah, I, 
took off last night in the storm, or is he just he forget that? Is he like groggy and like doesn't even remember that there was a storm right right the night before? Like, what does he think? I know. And then because it it comes to him with the warships when they're on the warship, he's like, a hundred year. Katara says it. Yeah. She's like, I think you. I think you was more like a hundred years. years, and I'm like a hundred years. Like he thinks, what, what he thinks it's like a couple weeks. He thinks he's been Maybe. out for like a couple weeks, and Katara's like, I think it was more like a hundred years, and he's like, what the fuck? Like what the fuck? I I would literally break down, collapse. Me too. Crying. If somebody <sighs> told me that I went to sleep and woke up and it was a hundred years later and everyone I know is gone, like because genocide or not, they wouldn't have been around. I they mean, wouldn't. Boomy, Boomy is r- old it. as fuck. No. Some people would be very, very old. Yes, but, but that would still be jarring. And all his, also his best friend, who that monkey Yatso, was already an old man, yeah. so he wouldn't have been. That's like, crazy. Like I like that. Like what a moment. Oh, I do want to say that in the theme song of the first episode, Aang's not there. When they pan up. Oh, shit. And I really just, I love that aspect every single time I watch the first episode. Oh, shit. Because Katara's like, but I have hope that, like, he can come back and save the world. And he's not there. He's literally not there. They don't know who, who, who he is, where he is, who it is, what's going to happen. On that note, there's so many things that were missing from the, the er, opening in the first episode that are added in to the one that we see every single other time yeah. that happen in the first two episodes. Like, that shot of Sokka and Katara going, yes, yes! Like, you see it in the, the yes! episode. And I noticed like, that. I noticed that, there too. There it is. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, there, that's, that, that's the shot. That's the shot. It's happening. Like, while we were watching, I was like, w- we were both like, whoa. Yeah. Damn. Oh, <sighs> shit. And then it's like, oh, the light. And then, oh, Zuko. Had a cost for the light. Had a cost for the light. And, okay. Th- but, okay. okay, the thing is, here's, wait, sorry. But the reason why you don't really realize how teenager Zuko is is because he's yelling at people and they don't really show him. Like, he said, wake my uncle. And you, they do not show who he's yelling to. Yeah. So it's really, like, not a dynamic of this kid is yelling at his adult team. Yeah. And then in the in the live action, you really see that. And you see like, that he's so much younger than everyone. Why is that child yelling at? Them? Yeah, it's like, dude, chill out. Like, and and also, I think just watching it back as an adult, like this, the animated series, like you do realize that nobody's really taking him seriously. I didn't r- notice yeah. it as a kid because yeah. I was like, well, he's yelling, so obviously people are taking him seriously as a character. And you're also only looking at him frowning really hard, and you kind of just get assigned power to the frown. And he kn- he's so self-assured. He's yeah. so self-assured in what he's doing, so he's just like, he doesn't even, it doesn't even matter to him he, that nobody's listening to him. But the thing him. is, he's not self-assured, he's just stubborn and, t- and demanding and then blocking yeah. everything out because he's yeah. the most insecure thing in the world. Well, it's not self-assured, it's more like determined, like one-track minded. Like He's, he's like, like, I didn't ask for anyone's opinion. I'm doing We're doing this. this. And <laughs> so, so Uncle is like, it's probably not him, like, Prince Zuko, like, you know, give it up. The rest of the crew just kind of looks at him. Mm-hmm. Like, they never say anything back. They never, like, talk back to him until the storm when he's like, what is up with this brat? Like, somebody yeah. tell me what's up with this kid. Right. And then Uncle does. Yeah. But they're all just kind of like, like, they just kind of give him looks. And then I noticed this time that when he goes, wake my uncle. Mm-hmm. Tell him I found the avatar as well as his, his hiding, hiding place. place. They don't wake him. Yeah. Or like they that they wake him that time, but then he says wake my uncle again mm-hmm. when they're about to like land. And uncle doesn't come out with them. No. He doesn't wake up until later when the avatar is escaping. Yeah, and he goes, That's great. He's just a child. Which is a crazy thing to say because did he see what just happened? Like I don't think so. But the the, the, oh, the, the, uh, the ship avalanche. is like sledged, if that's a word. And he, Zuko's like, uh-uh, do you see what he just did? That's the smartest thing Zuko said so far. Zuko's not, like, dumb. He's just ignorant. He's impulsive. He's ignorant. He's ignorant and impulsive. And impulsive. At this point in the show. And impatient, which is why he's an Aries. He learns patience by, like, he learns a lot of patience he throughout, the, so throughout the show. And it's patient. like, my boy is zen. Look, he's zen. He literally, I one of my notes was like, Zuko speaks crazy. Like, the way he's talking is so crazy. He sounds like Azula, and he also, also sounds like all the other royals yeah. at the in season one the whole time. Like, just his cadence and the and his accent. And then slowly over the course of the show, he starts to talk like a normal person. Yes. Like, literally just talk. He's, and like, he's literally, like, so crazy. Yeah. He's so on level 100 in the beginning. <laughs> I'm like, boy, sit down. I really love all the facial expressions we get to see from him in uh, season three. And they start gradually coming in season two. 
Right, like uh, season he two. He has pretty crazy ones in season one. It just is like, a, it's applied in a different way. I don't need any comic tea. Yeah. Like that he's so fucking face that he had. Like he's, he. you need some calming tea. You need to like, take a nap. so funny. What It's so funny to me when he. To? <laughs> what is he? What's going on? You need to sit down and just breathe. I want to know what Uncle's journey is with this because he's on this boat with his nephew for three years and he's like, I don't know at all how to deal with this. <laughs> I'm going to just let him go. I'm going to let him keep doing this and I will just be here because... He, yeah, he's Which like, I did like in the live... Sorry to bring up... Can we just talk... I, if I have a good thing about the live action, I'll say it. Yeah. But I did like in the live action where he, he when he they showed him coming with him on the boat where it was like, it was like, yeah, I... There are so many hints where it's like, Uncle thinks of you as a son and you're not getting it yet until later. Yeah, he, so many aspects. He doesn't he does not realize that like his father sucks and then uncle's son is dead. Yes. So like and I wonder he probably like, feels guilt because he, his his son died at war. Yeah, he feels guilt because he's like why is this war happening? I'm pretty sure the death of his son is what made him start think, double thinking about everything the Fire Nation had to do because yeah. that's when he like stepped down. That's when he like abdicated the throne. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and Azula was and like, Azula was weak, like, weak, 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 weak. <laughs> You're like uncle, weak. You're like uncle. <laughs> I think uncle's weak. And then the mom is like, his son just died, Azula. And then she's like, what is wrong with that child? <laughs> yeah, honestly. Oh my god, it's like the bad apple or the bad seed. Literally, what is? And she's like damn like her father really got into her huh? yeah like she's like who is my husband and who is my child i i read somewhere i really need to read the more of the extended universe Me because too. i read somewhere that it was an arranged marriage and she did not want to marry him oh dope de der um <laughs> but like canon uncle's headspace is like okay my son died what's going on with the war like what is the point of this if my son is gone and then zuko gets banished and he's like I want him to have a figure. Like I think he goes with him because he's like, I just want to make sh like look out for make him. Make sure he's and make sure he's not okay. alone. He's thirteen. I think he's like literally like this man does. I mean, this child does not have a father, and he's about to go out. We do. I, I'm a little worried. We do see that scene in the animation. Yeah, when, it's when Zuko's still bandaged and Uncle is like, he's like yeah. smiling. He's literally like, we're gonna find. Isn't he? I can't remember. I can't remember. We'll get, we'll get there. Wait, you, are you asking if Zuko's smiling? Yeah. No, he's not smiling. His voice is just so small that it's. I can see how that would be etched in your memory. His voice is, they like high, high pitch it. And he's like, we're going to find him. Right, 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 and right. He's just right. determined. Right. But I have to say that on the rewatch that we did for our full series rewatch episode that we released in February. Yeah. Um, I was so mega obsessed with Sokka in a way that I had never been that obsessed before. Like, Sokka's always been my second favorite character. It's always been, like, a tie between the rest of the characters because Zuko was always my number one. But then this time I'm like, Sokka's growth and, like, the way he starts, because, like, he's such an asshole mm -hmm. in the first episode. Yeah. Like, in a different way from Zuko. But he is such a dick. Yeah. He is. It's just, like... <laughs> Who are you talking to? He's such a dick, but like I and what do you what do you think is going on? And I and I like that he is sexist and then quickly realizes because I think it shows his potential for growth. Yeah. Like I think it shows that if if like presented with new information, he will change. Yeah, he he's a he's a man of logic. Yes. You know? He's a man of logic. He's a man of logic. So he's just like, oh well, logically what I've seen is women a, don't a, a woman kicked my I mean, ass. Women, um <laughs> women don't fight. Women in my village don't fight. So, so logically, logically women don't fight. They don't fight. And then Suki says, women do fight and they're going to kick your ass. And, and, and so logically, And then he's like, well, logically, fight. I need the women on my side. Logically, I need those women on my side. <laughs> logically, I need to pick up what those women are doing. <laughs> like, literally, I just love Sokka. And I admittedly have been reading a lot of Sokka Zuko fan fiction. It's making me insane. Amber has heard about this. But, like, I, I don't know. I've read it before, but I hadn't read that many. And it's, like, now it's the only thing I read if I go on AO3. And so many of them are so good. And I feel like really, really, like, the Avatar fandom really knows how to characterize the characters. Like, we know our gang. And the ways in which Sokka is characterized and the ways in which Zuko is, I relate to Zuko so much. And I said this to Amber. It's just, like, 
makes me like crazy about yeah. Sokka. Like in the way where I'm Zuko, I need Sokka. Like I mm-hmm. need Sokka. But he again, it doesn't exist. Again, he's an animated character. It's just so frustrating. <laughs> we we have met Jack DeSena. We went to an Avatar like reunion panel at uh, Comic-Con. San Diego Comic Con, and Jack DeSena and Dante Bosco were on the panel, and they did a reading of one of the comics. And then we got to, did we even? I, you say that we talked to Dante Bosco, but I don't feel like we did. What happened was we waved or something. Something there was some exchange. He looked at us or something. I don't know. I really can't remember. I really cannot remember. He uh, left the panel early, I remember. Or not, no, he no, no. The panel he, early. He, he was, left quickly. He, yeah, he, I think he ha- he probably had somewhere to go. But with Jack DeSena, there was like a crowd around, and we were like, we were about to get a selfie, and so we all, someone pushed all of us, so we fell into him. While so, we were taking, while we were taking the photo. Him. So it was him like literally holding all of us up. Well, right before that happened, though, we asked him if we could have his placard. Which, oh, yeah. Where is that? Like, where did it go? We were like, can we have your placard? And, and he, he signed like, it. He signed it and gave it to us. It. And we have a picture with him holding it. Like, with yeah. us, with him holding it. And then we fell into him. And in all the pictures, we're, like, kind of half laughing, ha- kind of, like, falling on yeah. Jack DeSena. Yeah. He was really sweet. He was, yes. The first time I watched this, my dumbass really did think that Aang was not the Avatar when he said that he wasn't. He Me said, too. I, I knew people him. that knew him. I was a child. I was seven. Same. I was I mean, eight, nine. I was like, I yeah. It was all about like, well, that's what who we saw in the previews. So but maybe it, yeah, I, that's I was like, not him. It's called Avatar. And isn't he the main character? Yeah. It was just like what a, whatever you say. And they would play that episode. All, all the, the time. time. And every single time I was confused. Yeah, because that was as far as it got. Like, I literally <laughs> cannot remember, like, much else after that. I remember the first five episodes. Like, R- I Yes, w- like, but then I also randomly remember Toph. And I'm like, why do I remember Toph? Because I think I because it was on and then we watching. would be like, oh, they added someone? Yeah, but, like, how fast did these episodes come out? And then it was like, oh, Zuko has hair? It was over the next few years. We I were didn't older. See Zuko. I didn't we see- were older. I didn't see Zuko had hair until like way older when like maybe like high school or like ninth grade or like eighth grade where I saw it on Nicktoons and I was like, that's that character with the ponytail. <laughs> how ma- Played sh- by American and Dragon I, Jake Long. Yeah, and yes, played by American Dragon Jake Long. And I was like, how far did this show go? I didn't know they completed the storyline. I didn't. Yeah, I, I had no, I was like, whatever happened to that? When I didn't we, know when it was we, chronological order. When I we so ev- heavily. When we started it, me neither. I was like, oh, I thought it was just like weird little cartoon, cartoon adventures. Yeah. Um, but I did see, I did see a glimpse of Zuka with hair like in 2007 or eight, like mm, whenever season two was on or whatever. Um, but yeah, I fully took him at face value, but I think we're supposed to because it's from Katara's point of view. It's yeah. like, we're learning things. And we want to go on this journey because Katara wants to go on this journey. Yeah. Aang doesn't want to go on this journey. Sokka doesn't want to Sokka go on this journey. Go on this journey. He's going to protect his sister. Yeah. Like, Aang is going because he feels like he has to. Aang does have <laughs> Katara to. Katara wants to. Yeah. She wants to go learn waterbending. Yeah. At the end of the second episode, The Avatar Returns, when Grand Grand said, I have it written down. She said, you found the Avatar for a reason. Now your destinies are intertwined with his. And I burst into tears. Amber was sitting next to me on the couch. <laughs> I just she burst into tears and started wailing. I was like, I can't. Like, I can't think about, I can't think about them. I can't think about them. And whenever, and, and whenever someone has that clip, post that clip. Everyone's posting that clip with where Toph is like, you think that uh, friendships last across the generation uh, and they're like i don't see why not i li- i can't like me, i can't me either that clip came oh not even that clip uh, the clip from cora came up on my reels one night and it was her being like nice to see you twinkle toes and i busted into tears i was like uh, wasn't it clipped with that clip there is one that was like that but i'm talking about like literally like two nights ago when just this scene came up and i busted into tears i can't like i actually can't like and and honestly I have my own issues with Korra and like the ensemble. Not, uh, no, I don't connect to the ensemble of Korra as much as the original gang. However, I also have a discomfort with Korra because the original gang is dead. Like, yeah. the existence of Korra means that the original gang does not exist anymore, and I, I actually can't handle it. I like when I watched 
whatever episode they revealed it, I think it's the first episode, and they said Sokka died. I was like, no, I have to turn this off. There's no reason for that. That's another reason that I'm like content to be in my own head canons of like Zuko and Sokka got married because in canon, Sokka died young and was not married and had no kids. And I'm like, I can't have that for Sokka. That cannot be his story. That cannot be how his life ended. Is that really what happened? Yes, he did not. He didn't marry anybody. He didn't have any kids. And he died young. And I'm like, I can't you have can't that, that. No, for Sokka. I don't know about that one. We can't have that for Sokka. I don't want that. No, he happily married Zuko. <laughs> <laughs> no, he happily married Zuko. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> No. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Now, let's talk about this. You haven't seen my staff around, have you? Aang's such a smart ass. Aang is, wait. He's so quick on his feet, <laughs> physically and mentally. Have you seen the edits online of like people like, look at Aang dodging every single thing Zuko yes. throws at him. And it's like, and, he, and there's one where he just like shifts a slight lower. He go, he just goes, he moves slightly lower than the first fire. And I'm like, yes. Zuko, you're just punching air. Like you're, this is, it. this is embarrassing. And what's the point? What's the end goal? Are you going to kill him? You, yeah, You've been he, looking for him for years. You're going to kill him and he's going to be reincarnated somewhere else? Honestly, what, what does he think he's going to do? Because if he's, Blasting fire flames at him. Imagine it hits him. What? What? And then what? And then and then what are you gonna do? And then you have to take care of his burns. Yeah, like you're going. Like what's happening? It, it just, he just, has no plan. He has no plan. He is not thinking about anything other than debilitating him in the moment, and th- and so that's embarrassing. And then I want to say, oh, I can't. When Sokka runs towards Zuko in the first episode, it's just so naive. Like, Sokka is like, here's combat, and he just takes off, and it's like, what are you gonna do next, and what are you gonna do? This is so funny. Being two people that have watched this series as much all the way through as we have, especially so recently, seeing this first episode and the ways in which the the four of them are like, the, their power level. Yeah. Like, Katara is the weakest. Katara does not know what how to control her power mm-hmm. at all. Yeah. And then you have Sokka who thinks he's a warrior but like actually has never seen any real combat yeah. above her. Yeah. And then Zuko who has seen combat a little, he has a, an army and he can firebend. And he was and like raised to raised to, to, to go ready. to war, yeah. to be to, to be ready. And so he easily defeats Sokka. But then it's like you have this 12-year-old kid who has been in the ice for a hundred years, and he's a master he's airbender. Mastered his, he's mastered. He's a it. master airbender. And on top of what uh, what element he's mastered, it's the one that is like the most like mind to spirit. Like it's like I am aware of where everyone is. Every air nomad is an airbender because they're all that energetically yes. connected. Like they're like like every single air nomad. Because they're that that's the that's their Aang, culture. And, and Aang doesn't blow anything. Like in the, these things, Aang's not blowing anything at Zuko. He's just on the defense. Yeah. He's literally just like, Zuko is chasing me again. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. You haven't seen my staff around, have you? <laughs> just runs away. He and doesn't then, care. It's honestly so fucking funny. And it's the reason why whenever people say Aang is a Gemini, it, it's really <laughs> funny to me because He's like that, but then he'll be like, okay, two things. When 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 he lost Appa, he, the switch up is very real. It's like Aang is very fun and lighthearted, but do not, do not do something so pointed and intentional to him. Which don't hurt his loved ones. Don't hurt his loved ones. He's like, actually, actually, back up. Like chase me, but back the fuck up. And also, <laughs> like when he. <laughs> Like, when he goes into the spot, this is what I wanted to say. It's the reason why Aang is a Gemini is because whenever he goes from, like, into the, into the Avatar state, it shocks people because they're like, this is a 12-year-old who has been running and laughing while we're fighting. And now he is single-handedly sloshing everyone about. Literally, the the it's way crazy. that he's the youngest on the show, yes. by far. The way, and the way his face switches up, like, he'll be just, it, he just looks down and then he'll, like, turn up. The hardest frown I've ever seen on this child's face. He is like, and it's like, back up. I love it. I love it. Honestly, I love it. I love it. I'm like, you can't, you cannot, you cannot mess with him. You can't. He is being so generous to you right now, and you need to back the fuck up. I fucking love Aang. I love all the characters, honestly, like, so much. And, like, this is also something that 
you don't realize how early you get the duality of all the characters. Yeah. Because Katara's like, oh, don't but like, I want, I want a water bend. And then Sokka's like, shut the fuck up, Katara. And she's like, well, why don't you shut up, Sokka? He's like, like you can have yeah, yeah, she literally it's goes literally off. like, don't cross Katara. Ka- Katara is a waterbender. Yeah. Katara is a water sign. That's the ocean. She's emotional. That's the don't, ocean. Don't mess with her because her mood can change like that. Yeah. And you, you see it. She's the reason that Aang is free because of her rage. Yes. She says, <laughs> and Sokka's like, Katara. He's like, wait a second now. He literally, for a while, and oh, we saw this while we were watching, like, for literally the first half of her yelling at him, Sokka's not listening. He's not moving he's, at he all. He does not care. He's looking for fish. He's like. <laughs> because he's probably just like, my sister's yelling at me again because I probably insulted her somehow. I'm not thinking about what I just He doesn't said. give a fuck. Like, yeah. And then, and then. And then it starts He sloshing. sees that they're sloshing and he's like, Katara. And she's like, no, you know what? I'm not going to stop. He's like, Katara. <laughs> and I, just, I wonder, it's just so, in, like, I can't believe she broke the iceberg Aang was in. I, their destinies are intertwined. Their destinies are intertwined. All of them, including Zuko. Because why was he at the Southern, at he southern Pole? Yeah. Why was he at the Southern Water Tribe when that happened? You and know, he's been looking for the Avatar all across the world. He's been all across the world. Yeah. I read a fan fiction where that was set at the Western Air Temple between Zuko and Sokka. Mm-hmm. And it was like, oh, they both can't sleep, so they're gonna, so Zuko is like up late. And Sokka's like, oh, can I go on a walk with you? And Zuko's like, I guess so. And he leads him like up through the temple. And Sokka's like, oh, you've been exploring, haven't you? You know your way around. And he's like, I've been here before. Yeah. And he's like, what? And he's like, oh, well, I, yeah, I, I've looked at all the air temples multiple times because I was looking for the Avatar for three years. And it's like stuff like that where I'm like, there's these little intricacies about these characters that like we don't get to see because it's not a part of the main plot. But yeah. it's like literally Zuko has been traveling the world for three years. He yes. could have been in any part of the world. Yeah. And he was at the South Pole. I was going to say he found out that Aang left and was he- like he- the southern air temple was closest to the water. The south. It doesn't oh, make sense. He, he probably knew that. Yeah. He, it well, doesn't make actually, sense. Because he wouldn't know that, that, that the baby, Avatar he lived He ran there. away either. Yeah. He wouldn't have known that he ran away. He just would have been like, he wasn't. Yeah. What? Hold on. What is happening? Because if the Avatar disappeared, why do they think it's an airbender? I think that's that's what I, that's kind of like. Something that I said because when we were watching it last night, and then I stopped myself because I was like, "This is gonna get too intense." It technically could have been an Earthbender at this point because they, they killed all the Airbenders, and they in so maybe he, he, he like they the our Avatar was reincarnated into the Water Tribe, but then they killed, killed all, all of the, the water Waterbenders in the Southern Tribe, and they're it's clearly not in the in the in the Northern Tribe, and so it, it might it might be in. The, so I'm just kind of like, I know what I feel. What like, do y'all y'all know? You th- you know that the Avatar wasn't there. I think that how can they tell? Sozin went insane. Like, he literally went insane with power, which is why he, like, killed all the airbenders. And then he was like, I can't find the Avatar. I I think that they killed all the airbenders, and he knew that if the Avatar was among the airbenders, he would have stopped it, like, or they would have stopped it, whatever happened. And he was like, we defeated them really easily, and he convinced himself that the Avatar was still out there. And then the rest of the world thought that the Avatar disappeared. Because I feel like regardless of wh- whatever nation the Avatar was in currently, given the state of the world, they would have fought back. Any of them. You know? like, yeah. And they would have appeared any time within the last 100 years. Yeah. Which is why yeah. I think everyone thinks Zuko's crazy because he's like, the Avatar hasn't been seen in 100 years. Like, mm. you're not going to find him. He He's gone. Yeah. It, it, it's done. He's gone. Like it's done. They the cycle. Whoever, gone. whoever, whoever, ha- whatever happened to the Avatar? He's not. The Avatar doesn't exist he's, anymore. Because he's not. He's not. A, he's not. At this point, it's a legend. Like Sokka's like water magic. Right. Uh, the Avatar, like that. The Avatar doesn't exist. Like the Avatar hasn't been seen in a hundred years. The water and, magic and I don't thing think does that, genuinely confuse me though, because his mother. I mean, not because he was alive when they took the Waterbenders. I don't think he was. Well, he was because no. Remember the like uh, what's her face? Oh. The Bloodbender was the last of round her. of. And then Katara was. Born. And then Katara was born. So, so-, so K- Katara is the first Waterbender that Sokka's ever met in his life, and it's his little sister. Why do you think that is? What do you mean, why? Because there's no other waterbenders. Yeah, but why? Like, if Hama was the last one, how come she was the first one to be born again? Because I think that they, think their the spirit, I think, yeah, their spirit was, was so crushed and blocked that, like, something. there were no waterbenders that got born until Katara, because her destiny is intertwined with Aang's. 
Okay. Okay. Wait, I'm gonna start sobbing because that I, I've always been like, I've always been like, why does Saka not believe in water? I'm so confused. I mean, look at their village. It, like you look at their their village were is t- this big on on like when when the the Zuko's ship is bigger than their village or like just as big as their entire village. And they have that and warship just in the ice. Like this is a, a devastated land, and it's like. I'm just thinking about how the chi was blocked. Like it literally was like they had, they did not have, they did not have the spirit in them to learn from the the waves anymore. And it's and then little and then enter little Katara, and she she is hope, and she's always talking about hope. And it's because that's because she was the village's hope. She was the hope. She her whole existence is like about bringing back hope. And her mother sacrificed herself for it because they came to that village because they heard that they heard that there was a waterbender. How did they hear that? I think that they just have like ears. Ears. Those fucking hawks or something. Maybe they heard where Katara starts this episode and where she ends this season, but also the series. Like it's almost like she's not this. Like none of them are the same person at all. Like Sokka acts really confident, but he's not confident at all. He's actually really insecure. And then by the end of the series, he is really confident. Sokka's not confident. Aang is not happy. Zuko is not self self assured, so he's not confident, confident either. He doesn't know himself or at he all. He doesn't. He doesn't know what he's doing. He he is acting like he does. And Katara wants to be what she keeps saying she wants to be, and she gets and it. And then she does it. Katara's like, okay. Well, I'm saying loudly what I want. <laughs> I think Katara. Y'all... I think Katara is the only Masking. one who believes in herself. From yeah, the, from the very beginning. Yeah, or like, she, yeah, she believes in herself, and she's like, despite honestly, like, everybody else, loud. She's loudly like, "This is what I believe can happen, and what the, the, like we can, we don't have to live this way." She's like, "I sense great wisdom in him, and yes, he's a twelve year old and he's crazy, but like, she's right. He's a master he of his is element. Really wi- he is really wise, and she's like, teach me how to bend.' And he, she, like, she, he does. He's not even a water bender. She's just like, teach me how to bend because I know that you know how to bend an element." And it's within. Every element is from it's within. from within. Like, you you can't not be connected to yourself if you want to be a good bender. And it's, like, honestly, like, very metaphorical for everything in life. Okay, I mean, is, is there that, anything else that you want to say about these first two episodes? Because we have the whole rest of the series. I'm trying to think about the second episode a little more. Because I feel like we didn't even really talk about this episode. We kind of did another general. Conversation. Well, we did, we did a general mostly, but about, ta- about how it starts, how it starts, yeah. like where they are in this episode, like who they, who the characters are, and like how they're setting the characters up, yeah. like you know, like yeah. they set these characters up really well. I mean, yeah, I don't know, I don't know if I have any specific ones about. No. I can't believe I've never sobbed watching this episode before in my life. I my in my whole life never sobbed watching any of these episodes. Um, yeah. Do you have Do you have anything else? to say I oh I mean I guess to wrap it up we should just talk about the ending scene where Aang is like yeah I'm the avatar I never wanted to be let's go let's go to the let's go to the northern water tribe um but first we got to do oh, these things yeah. and they're like yeah what do we need to do and then he just lists a bunch of fun things that he wants to do and I'm just like that's who he is <sighs> sweet little Aang that's literally who he is like sweet little Aang it's genuinely like like I actually just told you I didn't want to do that. <laughs> he doesn't want to do it at all. So let he me just He doesn't do understand because they're they're only in this little village. He doesn't know what the rest of the world is like. Yeah. And even though he knows it's a hundred years later, he can't conceptualize it, so he does not know how dire it is. Yes. He literally he's doesn't 12. know how dire it is until Roku tells him. Yeah, he's like, okay. He like Roku honestly pulls him by the like neck, the like shrug, and is like, child. Child. He just starts shaking him. And that is when I started sobbing the first time we rewatched Me too. it in that episode. Me too. That was insane. I think it, that was insane. I, I don't want to like get jump ahead too much, but like what you're saying is like literally, I think at the beginning of the next episode where Zuko's like, he's clearly a master of evasive maneuvers. Mm-hmm. And then Sokka's like, we're lost, aren't we? Yeah. It's perfect. It's, it, they, it's like Zuko, they're children. It's almost like Zuko, you are projecting so much onto him. He's he just like not. he must be a master of of any th- of everything to be outwitting me. Right. It's like no, he's a kid and so are you. Right. He must be a master to be outwitting me, dude. You aren't. No. You don't know what you're doing. And actually. it's like, oh, we think that Zuko's so scary, and then Azula comes, and we're like, 
Mm-hmm. Zuko, what have you been up to? Yeah, Zuko, what is your background? What are you doing? Zuko, what is your... It's perfect. It's honestly how, how, how angry he is and how emotional he is and how easily um, people can rile him up. Like, people can rile him up really easily. And he doesn't even realize it. Yeah. And it's like, Zuko, she is lit. Azula is literally playing you. She is playing you like a violin yeah. right now. Yeah. Okay. Listen to your uncle. Oh my God. Oh my God. <sighs> okay. Wait, stop. He, I just, he's, he's so like, whenever he's like, my sister, I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but that's for another day. <laughs> Okay. Um, I can't believe we're doing this. Well, um, I, I think that we're going to do the rest of our Avatar rewatch series on Patreon. So yes. um, if you are into Avatar, uh, follow us on Patreon. Uh, donate at least $5 on Patreon. We have a lot of bonus content on there already. Hey. A s- couple bonus episodes. And now Avatar rewatch episodes. What should we call it? Should we just call it like Avatar Central or like Avatar. Avatar's Fangirls? Avatar's Fangirls. The Avatar's Fangirls. Avatar's Fangirls. Maybe we should. Avatar's fan girls. And then we should use Azula's uh, sound voice, bite yeah. in this. Maybe it's even at the top of this episode, Rachel. Yeah. Okay, so, but we didn't introduce ourselves once. <laughs> um, Y'all, well. So this is oh, Fangirl Central. This is Fangirl Central. We're being a Fangirl Essential to our identity. I'm Amber. I'm Amanda. You can find all the information about us and everything we've ever done in the bio. Yep. So, you know. Y- y- Avatar's fan girls. Avatar's fan girls. And uh, the last Abound to Rewatch cast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, this was fun. Um, so excited to get into the rest of the series. Can't believe we already cried. It's episode one. Yeah. And um, follow us everywhere at fangirl.central and keep an eye out for what we're doing. Um, yeah. We love everybody who listens to this. And as always, keep, keep it, it chaotic. chaotic.